Thank you. Please be seated. All right, we are back on the record on Fremont County case CR 22211623 councils present as well as the defendant and defense counsel. The court will note that all 18 jurors are present and properly seated and the court has reviewed and confirmed that all 18 jurors have signed their juror affirmation for the day. So thank you again for following the court's admonishment given to you at the end of each day. We're continuing with the case in chief of the state. Uh, I believe the state at this point is calling its next witness and who's gonna be uh, conducting direct. Your Honor, uh, the state will be calling Brenda Dye and I'll be handling that. All right, Mr. Wixom, then you can call your witness. or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you, God. Thank you. All right, now that the uh, witness has been sworn, let me just inquire, because these trial is being live streamed and accessible to the public. I wanted to inquire on the court's exclusionary order. Uh, Ms. Dye, were you, have you reviewed or watched any of the trial testimony that's taken place since the case started? No. Okay, and have you talked to anyone else about their testimony they've given in trial? No. Okay, <clears throat> with that affirmation, then I'll allow Mr. Wixom to commence with the direct. And I'll ask the witness, please talk right into the microphone so we make sure to pick up your uh, words. And go ahead, Mr. Wixom. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Dye. Good morning. Will you please state and spell your full name for the record? Brenda Dye, B-R-E-N-D-A, last name Dye, D-Y-E. Thank you. And ma'am, where do you live? I live in Fremont County, Island Park, Idaho. And what do you do for a living? I am the Fremont County coroner, and um, I also work for Fremont County EMS as an EMT. And to to clarify that for the jury, as an EMS, are, are you trained in life-saving techniques? Yes. As an EMS, are you trained in autopsies or any of those kinds of things? No. How long have you been the coroner? I took office in January of 2019. So when you say that you took office, you're an elected position? I am, yes. When you took office at that time, did you receive any uh, specialized training as to how, how to be a coroner? Very limited training. I I did attend a two-day training in, in Boise. Um, and then I attended probably a four-day training in Las Vegas, Nevada in July of 2019. Since that time, have you received other training um, as a coroner? Yes. What training have you received? Uh, every spring and fall training in Boise, here in Boise, and then every July we have a training in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I've attended that every year since 2019. Can you um, explain to the jury what is the primary function and role of a coroner in Idaho? We respond to unattended deaths. We determine the cause of death. We um, make sure that our decedent gets to the proper funeral home. And then we sign, I sign off on the death certificate. Okay. I want to back up um, and have you explain a little bit um, 
Does Idaho have an ME system, a medical examiner system? Yes, and here in Ada County, that's our closest facility to take our decedents for autopsy. Typically in most counties in Idaho, do they have their own ME? No. I'd like you to kind of please explain um, what functions or, or things do you do to help determine a cause of death when you arrive at an unattended death? Uh, we conduct an investigation. We uh, look for weapons. We look for medications. We look um, for the family to give us information, health history about um, for their for the decedent. And just for the jury's sake, from your perspective, how do you define an unattended death? A uh, death that is not uh, someone who's not directly under a doctor's care. And you just noted that one of the things you do is to look for weapons. Why do you do that? To determine cause of death. Why is identifying whether there's a weapon uh, important in determining a cause of death? Uh, if it was homicide, suicide, uh, medications for natural health history. Okay. <clears throat> what factors as a coroner do you look at when you determine whether or not to have an autopsy performed? Oh, when we conduct our investigation, uh, we usually have a detective on scene who helps us um, determine that. Um, and uh, usually if it's if we cannot find a cause of death. Um, and we don't don't do a lot of autopsies just because of my budget it doesn't allow for us to do a lot of autopsies and we have to come over to Ada County um, and transport the body over here if we um, deem it necessary for an autopsy. Thank you. I'm gonna ask you to define for the jury some terms that, that you might typically use as a coroner. Are you familiar with the term lividity? Can you explain to the jury what that word means? Judge, could I have some foundation as to how she knows about lividity? Mr. Wixom? Ma'am, how do you know uh, what the word lividity means? My training and my EMS training for years. Will you please go ahead and explain to the jury what that word means? Yes, it's the it's the lowest point of the body that the blood pools when um, when somebody is no longer living, and it uh, pulls at the lowest point in the body and it's just it looks like a bruise it looks like a red Oops. help the jury understand how does identifying whether or not there's lividity help you in your role as a coroner it helps me to know uh how the body was found how the body uh the position of the body at the time of death why is that important for you to know if the body was moved. Um, that's the most important is to know if uh, someone has moved the body or not. Perhaps maybe this is more of a common term, but can you explain to the jury your understanding of the definition of rigor mortis? Rigor mortis is stiffening of the body. Um, it normally occurs two to six hours after the time of death. And then it releases after about eight hours, approximately. And why is identifying rigor mortis important to your role as a coroner? Uh, to determine the time of death. In addition to rigor mortis, are there other things that you look at to determine time of death? Uh, yes, we can look at lividity, rigor mortis, uh, the temperature of the body. A lot of times, well, the abdomen, abdomen, abdominal cavity is the last part of the body to um, lose its warmth. 
So if somebody is cold to the touch on the abdomen, they have been deceased for quite a while. And then when you are responding to an unattended death and are making a determination if an autopsy is necessary, what other factors besides those mentioned do you look at or consider to determine if an autopsy is appropriate? Um, I think permanent. <clears throat> Part of our investigation when we um, when we cannot determine a cause of death or um, if it is a homicide, then we do autopsies. And uh, child deaths, we normally do autopsies. Okay. I want to draw your attention back to October nineteenth of twenty nineteen. Do you recall responding to an unattended death for a Tammy Daybell? Yes. And prior to responding to that, had you ever heard Tammy Daybell's name? No. You didn't know her in any way? No. What about her husband, Chad Daybell? Were you familiar with him at all? No. Any of the Daybell family members that you were acquainted with or knew in any way? No. So can you explain to the jury when you responded to that unattended death, how did you receive that call or that request to come? I was um, on the ambulance for my other job, and we were returning from um, an ambulance call from the hospital, and I received a call from our dispatch that there was an unattended death that I needed to respond to. Is that the norm? Dispatch will call you? Yes. Right. And uh, the best you can recall, what time of day did you receive that call? It was early morning. And did you respond immediately? I got there as quickly as I could. I had the ambulance drop me off on my way back through. When you say the ambulance drop you off, were you hurt or were you working otherwise? No, I was working. How long approximately did it take for you to arrive on scene for the time you got the initial call? Approximately 45 minutes. And prior to arrival, did you talk to anybody else about helping you with this? Yes, I called my deputy, um, my deputy coroner, Wilmore. Uh, she's about 10 minutes away from where the, the deceased was. And dispatch had called me a few times to request uh, my estimated time of arrival because the decedent's husband was very distraught, very upset, crying. Um, and so I had my deputy go and start the investigation until I showed up. Are you aware, was anybody else uh, dispatched or sent to the scene? Uh, yes, we had an officer Greenhalgh there. So at the time that you arrived, had the officer, officer Greenhalgh and uh, deputy coroner uh, Wilmore already arrived? Yes. So I want you to tell the jury, what's the first thing that you observed when you arrived on scene? I observed uh, Chad, the husband, very distraught, very upset, uh, walking around. And his son was on scene also with him, Garth. Uh, Chad was very distraught. Garth was emotionless to me. And for the jury's sake, can you describe your recollection of the layout of the home when you first arrived there? I walked into the kitchen and there I met with Officer Greenhalch and Deputy uh, Wilmore, and they kind of filled me in on what they had done, what they had seen. And then at some point, did you go in and observe uh, Tammy Daybell's body? Yes, I did. And how did you get there? I walked through the kitchen, down the hall into the, bed, the back bedroom. Who took you into the bedroom? I believe... Um, Officer Greenhalch and Deputy Wilmore. And at some point, did you engage uh, Chad Daybill in any conversation or discussion? Yes. When did you do that? After I looked at the body, I questioned um, Chad about uh, Tammy's health, her past health history.
Your Honor, at this time, rather than republishing this exhibit, I would ask to have the witness provided the state's exhibit 295B is in David. Okay. And it was published yesterday to the jury. Ma'am, for the record, what, what what are you holding in your hand? I'm holding a picture of uh, Tammy, um, deceased on the bed. Okay. In looking at that photo, um, on the back of it, is there a mark on it? Um, the exhibit? Yes, ma'am. Do you see that? Yes. Do you, will you just note for the record what, what number that is? 295D. Thank you. Now flipping it back over and looking at it, just can you confirm for the jury is what you see in that picture the same position that Tammy's body was in when you first walked into the room and observed her? Yes. What did you first observe uh, about her body when you first? went in and looked at her. I observed um, the blood tinge sputum coming from her mouth. Um, kind of a foam, a pink foam. <clears throat> um, she was wrapped in a blanket. Um, I asked if that is the position she was in when she was found. And Chad told me, no, she was hanging half off the bed with her face and head towards the floor on her left side. Um, when he discovered she was deceased, he called for Garth to help him, whose bedroom is across the hall, and they picked her up off the floor and put her on the bed and covered her with a blanket. At that moment in time, when you were observing her, did you do anything to physically check her? Or, or touch her? I Yes, I did. What did you do? Uh, looked at the body. We always look at the body and know any injuries, any um, signs of struggle, anything. Um, I did observe rigor mortis um, had set in. Lividity on the back side, so her back, her bottom, her legs, the back of her legs as she was laying. Um, and then I also noted... Uh, that she was cold to the touch. Um, her abdomen was cold, so. When you, when you just noted that you observed lividity, mm -hmm. did you make that observation at that moment in time or did you examine her body? At what point did you identify what you thought was lividity? At that point, when I examined her body, I saw the lividity. What, if anything, did... Let me withdraw that. Did you just tell us, did, did you observe lividity on her body? Yes. And what, if anything, did that lividity tell you? That she died on her back. Did you observe anything else in the room at the time? Yes, there was a kitchen towel to the side of the bed. Um, and it had the pink... Uh, blood tinge sputum on it. And I asked Chad if he had used that towel. He, he said yes, that he had used that towel to wipe her face. And you were starting to explain to the jury, Chad gave you an accounting of how he discovered her. Yes, he said that um, he felt her body roll off the bed and that's what um, awakened him. And um, just because of the rigor mortis lividity, the coldness of her body, I asked how that was possible if she had been gone that long. And he said it may have been from um, him pulling on the sheets and releasing her body. 
as it fell. Um, he stated that she was going through menopause and she had hot flashes and she liked to sleep with her feet outside the covers and um, on the edge of the bed. What triggered you to inquire how, how that is possible or his account of how the body fell? Why did you question that? Uh, because if the body, if someone's dead, they can't roll out of bed. So I was trying to understand how that woke him up when somebody is dead, they can't move. Did his explanation make sense to you? Um, the explanation of maybe him pulling on the sheet or the blanket released her body. Um, but looking back on it, no. Why looking back on it, does it not make sense to you? Uh, it would take a lot of force to roll a body out of bed. So I'll move on. What else, if anything, did Chad tell you at that time about Tammy? Um, Chad stated that Tammy had been feeling really off for the past few months. Um, he stated that she had told him she felt outside of her body, not normal. Um, he told me that she had been having fainting spells. Um, and one, one occasion he said they were at the temple and she was kneeling at the altar. And when she went to stand up, she fainted. He said she had extremely low blood pressure. Um, but she did not seek medical attention for that from a doctor. She, he said she did not like going to the doctor, um, and she would try to treat everything natural. Uh, there was a lot of natural supplements and oils in the kitchen cupboard when we were looking for medications and also a natural remedy book on uh, her side table in the bedroom. I want to take you back. You said that Chad indicated to you that Tammy had a, a low blood pressure problem. Yes. But she wouldn't go to the doctor about that? Yes. He said that she tested it like on a Walmart or Walgreens blood pressure machine. Did Chad give you any accounting of the timing of the night before and kind of how he perceived Tammy? Yes. Uh, he said about 1230, she was having a coughing fit and she vomited in the bathroom. He helped her back to bed. She said she was okay. Um, and then he went to sleep. Did he ever identify for you what time it was that he claimed he would, was woken up by her falling? Approximately 12. Oh, her falling out of bed? Yes. Uh, I think it was just before 6 a.m. in the morning. You indicated that there were some, I think you talked about supplements or oils that were found in the home. Yes. Okay. And did anybody tell you whether or not those were things that Tammy was using? Uh, yes. Who told you that? Chad. What did he say about that specifically? That she liked to try and treat everything naturally and not go to the doctor, but she did have, we did find a prescription for fluoxetine. Um, and Garth admitted that he was sharing that with his mom for his uh, depression, anxiety. Did you identify any other prescribed medications in the home? Just the fluoxetine and then over-the-counter medications and the natural supplements. Okay. You mentioned earlier that Chad had said that Tammy had been feeling out of her body. Yes. Your experience as a coroner, is that a common way or a common symptom for someone to describe? Judge yeah, calls for speculation. Overruled. Could you repeat it? Sorry. In your experience, is saying that I feel out of my body a common thing for someone to describe as a symptom? It can be, yes. What did you take that to mean and how did that play into your assessment? 
uh, with the low blood pressure, with um, um, the fainting spells. Um, and also he did say that she had a fall uh, a month or two prior to her, um, to this day and she hurt her wrist. She did go to the doctor for that because she was afraid it was broke. Um, and the doctor did prescribe tramadol for that. There was no tramadol found on scene. He stated that she had taken the, the prescription as pres prescribed. Now, I want to be clear, as a coroner, you're not a medical doctor. No. Are MEs medical doctors? Yes. At the time you were on scene, besides identifying the supplements or the fluoxetine, yes. did you have access to any medical records for Tammy? No, those we have to request from the doctor and it can take up two weeks to receive those. So at that time, I'll withdraw that. At that point in time, approximately how many unattended deaths had you responded to? It was my first year being in office, so under 10. And now on average, how many unattended deaths do you respond to? It could be 20 to 50 a year. And ultimately, did you determine what you believed was the time of death for Tammy? Um, we estimated the time of death. Uh, if we don't have an exact time, then we do an estimation of when she was last seen alive and, um, when we get the call and then lividity, um, rigor mortis and the temperature of the body also plays into that. And ultimately, do you determine a cause of death and are you the one who signs a death certificate? Yes. And did you do that in this case? Yes. What did you determine uh, the cause of death for Tammy was initially? I um, I determined it was pulmonary edema. Can um, you explain that to the jury? Due What's to that? a cardiac event. So pulmonary edema is the um, the backup of fluid blood in the lungs. Um, and where he told me she had low blood pressure and the fainting spells uh, that can play into that, that part. And also uh, I asked about any seizure-like activity because of the foam in the mouth. Uh, Chad did tell me that she did have uh, shaking fits when she would faint. So her legs would shake and she would convulse. <clears throat> And how, how did you factor that into your determination of cause of death, that accounting from Chad about shaking fits? Uh, Seizure-like activity. And what, what led you to, you mentioned a second ago that you had included in your potential cause of death a heart attack. What led you to include that? A cardiac event, just because of the extremely low blood pressure and... Um, the fainting, which if your blood pressure does drop really low, it does make you faint. Now, as a coroner, do you make a decision about an autopsy based upon a family's wishes? No. Is that something you consider though? Um, ultimately, the decision is up to me. If I deem one necessary, then I do it regardless of family's wishes. In this instance, did you have a discussion with Chad or with the family about their feelings about an autopsy? I did mention it. Um, Chad didn't seem to uh, to want it or not want it, um, but Emma was on scene, Chad's daughter, and she uh, really didn't want her mom to have an autopsy. It's pretty extensive. And she didn't want her mom's body to have to go through that. So understanding that you make the shots in the call, do you still as a factor at least consider what the family is telling you about their wishes? Um, 
if I deem it necessary, then I do uh, order an autopsy. If I do not deem it necessary and the family requests an autopsy, then they are um, they're responsible to pay for that autopsy. Now, have you recently made any amendments to the death certificate? Yes. And what have you done with that? Uh, the manner of death was caught or was changed to homicide. The cause of death was changed to asphyxiation by suffocation. Can you explain to the jury why did you make that change? Um, Tammy's body was exhumed and a medical examiner uh, from Utah autopsied her body. Uh, she had a very deep... Judge, I'm going to object at this point. Um, she's calling to make conclusions that she doesn't have any foundation or, or we don't have any foundation to suggest she's qualified to make. And in addition, she's going to be reciting what another medical examiner may or may not have said. All right. On lack of foundation, I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Ma'am, you mentioned that there was an autopsy performed. Yes. Did you attend that autopsy? Yes. Were you present for the beginning to end of the autopsy? Yes. As you were there, uh, were you standing there with the ME performing the autopsy? Yes. Was the ME explaining as performing the autopsy what they were seeing? Yes. As a 20-year veteran, as an EMS, were you understanding uh, the terms and things that were being explained to you yes. from the ME? Yes. So then I'd like you to please go ahead with your what you were explaining to us about. Judge, and I'm going to renew my objection. At this point, it's relying on hearsay to make a determination of what someone else may have said about what they think they may or may not have found. It's overruled. Go ahead, please, ma'am. Um, sorry, Re can you repeat that question? I was asking you to please explain what you were observing during the autopsy that helped cause you to change your mind about the cause of death. Um, as they were dissecting the bruise, it was very a very deep bruise on her arm. Um, it didn't uh, make sense that she had thrown up the night before because she still had stomach contents. Um, I pause you, please. Yes. Explain that to the jury, please. So her stomach was full of food. If she threw up, there wouldn't be food in her stomach during the autopsy. Um, I was going to say, um, so I'm the one that signs the death certificate. I'm the one that, um, makes that determination. I do, um, um, if we do an autopsy on a body, I do take the medical examiner's um, um, words, advice. If you're not a doctor, they're a doctor. When they do the autopsy, then um, it helps me figure out the cause of death. You'd explained earlier that one of the bases for your original determination was seizures. What did you learn from the autopsy about that factor or that aspect of Tammy? All of Tammy's organs were very healthy. There was nothing in the brain. The heart was healthy. The only organ um, that was not healthy were the lungs. Um, when they were dissected, there was still foam, a lot of foam in the lungs. How did that impact your decision to change the death certificate? There shouldn't have been that foam in the lungs still. It was two months um, before she was exhumed and then autopsy was done. Is there anything else besides the autopsy that has impacted your decision to change the amended death certificate? Yes. What other things? I received a call from the Arizona police um, they wanted all of my coroner records. There had been, uh, 
a death in Arizona and Chad's name was brought up. Um, and there was also an, an attempt. Um, and when I heard all those names and the investigation that was going on and then it did change my mind. I didn't, if I had known that information, it would have been. Different. Who were the names that had been brought up? Lori Paolo. I'll withdraw. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Lori Ballo, uh, Alex Cox. Um, Chad Daybell. You mentioned the word attempt. What, what did you mean by that? Um, an attempt for um, Lori's niece's husband attempt a shooting. At the time that you made your original determination, had you heard the name JJ Vallo or Tylee Ryan? No. Did information related to those names also impact your decision to amend the death certificate? Yes. As you sit there today, do you have any regrets about your original decision? Um, yes. What are those regrets? No. Um, had I known um, that information, I would have ordered an autopsy. Um, um, at that time, with my limited training uh, and being new, um, I did the best I could at, with what training I had at that time. Thank you, ma'am. Your Honor, I have no more questions at this time. All right. Cross-examination. Judge, before we start, I have exhibit 19 and 20. If I could provide those to the uh, bailiff to have those marked. My understanding is 19 and 20 are admitted by way of stipulation of the parties. Okay. Have they? And what are those, Mr. Pryor? Uh, those are a, a death, a 20 is a death certificate, 19 are uh, uh, pictures. And Judge, we'll have a sidebar prior to going forward with the pictures, if that's. Acceptable to All the right. Day. How many pictures have you got in? It's going to be one. There are a number of pictures, uh, A through I think K, but specifically it's going to be uh, F that I think I'm going to be looking at. But I'll uh, request a sidebar before we go down that road. Okay. Your Honor, for my benefit, could I just ask counsel to refresh me what these photos are of? Are, are they of Tammy's death scene? Correct. Thank you. And Judge, there may be some overlap with what the state had. Um, admitted as well previously. So. Sounds like we have a defense exhibit 20 that's already been admitted. Is they, may or, they may already be on there. Okay, so the death certificate exhibit 20 has previously been admitted. I didn't have a recollection of that, Judge. My notes didn't reflect that. I apologize. All right, thank you. So you can, yeah, if you can start there. And when we get to the pictures, if we have exhibits not yet admitted, we'll take those up in turn. All right. And Judge, whenever you're, I can go forward. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. We'll so, um, and how would you like me to address you? Miss Dye or Coroner Dye? Miss Dye is okay? That's okay. Good. Ms. Dye, you had an occasion to um, uh, discuss this case with the FBI. Do you recall that? Yes. And and that discussion took place at the Rexburg Police Department? Yes. Okay. And uh, as part of that um, discussion with the FBI, you had mentioned that um, 
you had worked for EMS for 20 years. Yes. That you were uh, um, an EMT for five years and an advanced EMT for 15. Is that still accurate? Um, that was in 2019. So you have even more experience now. I have more experience now, yes. Right. So when you're talking about an EMT and an advanced EMT, um, an advanced EMT is someone who is qualified to give medication. Is that right? A certain medication, yes. Um, and there's there's also additional uh, training as well, identifying uh, um, uh, medical emergencies. But in addition, there's also some training as it relates to uh, death scene investigation. Is there not? Uh, yes. And for 20 years, you had experience doing that, right? My main concern as an EMT is to save lives. I understand that, but if the life can't be saved, you're still as an EMT for 20 years, given a significant amount of training about the death scene investigation, are you not? If we can't save the patient before I was cornered, then no, I didn't. We, we would leave the scene. Okay. Now, when you spoke with the FBI, um, your testimony with the prosecuting attorney is you said something about taking a two-day seminar. Is that right? Some sort of two-day training? In Boise, yes. And then you said there was a, a, some other classes or some other issues, right? That uh, you took? There's a week-long conference, and it's uh, it's about four days. But we, yes, it's a week long yeah. in Las Vegas, Nevada. Every and that's what year. I was curious about because you mentioned something about something else. But when you talked to the FBI, you described it as a week long conference with the FBI as part of your training, right? Right. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And um, what areas did that cover as part of that week long conference? Um, causes of death, uh, times of death. Um, it covers a wide variety. It's an extensive course. Yes, it was my first time attending too. And it, it and isn't is it required as part of being a coroner? Isn't that one of the requirements that you have to go through that training in order to be uh, either elected or appointed as a coroner of a county? Yes. And you have to get this extensive training because we're not dealing with a, a you know a minor issue. We're dealing with making a, a significant determination of the cause of death of somebody, aren't we, ma'am? Uh, yes. Okay. And are you familiar with uh, Title 19, Chapter 43 of the Idaho Code? I don't recall. Judge, would there be something that could refresh your recollection if I showed you something? Sure. Yes. Yeah, if you would please take time to just read that. I'm not having it marked. It's just read that. You could read that. Take the time to read that, and then when you're done, hand it back to the bailiff, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. What statute are you having her review, Mr. Pryor? 194301, Judge. I have a, another copy if I. If I would like, I could provide it to the court. Fine, I have it.
Thank you. Now you've read uh, Title 19, Chapter 43, of, uh, 01 of the Idaho Code. Is that objection, Your Honor? Grounds. Your Honor, this witness is not qualified to give any. She has no legal expertise to be interpreting statutes for the jury. Well, if it calls for a legal conclusion, I'll sustain it, but I don't know what the question is yet, so overruled for now. Now, ma'am, did you have an occasion to read that uh, as part of your responsibilities of becoming a coroner? When I first took over as coroner, yes. Right. So you're aware that uh, your primary job as a coroner under this particular legal statute of the law is um, uh, when, a county coroner, when a county coroner is informed that... Objection, Your Honor. This is calling for a legal conclusion. It's not, Judge. Overruled. When a county coroner is informed that a person has died, the county coroner shall investigate the death. You read that first line, right? And you're aware of that, right? Yes. You are under a legal, legal obligation under the law as part of your position to investigate any death, correct? Yes. And if that death was suspicious or unknown circumstances, that's sub B, or the death occurred as a result of violence, whether by homicide, suicide, accident, you are required to investigate, correct? Correct. Okay. And then as a result, if you determine that there's an issue, you can in require an, uh, an, in an inquest to be conducted, which is basically like a jury trial, right? You understand that? Yes. Okay. And you are also to notify the police if you have any, before even doing an inquest, if you have any concerns under the statute that there's anything suspicious or out of the ordinary you are to notify the police department and ask them to conduct an investigation. You understand that as well? Yes, and we did have an officer on scene that helped investigate this. And we have an officer respond to every death call that helps investigate. And I appreciate that, ma'am. Um, but in talking to the prosecutor, you talked about, well, the lapidity caused me some concern. Remember you said that about lapidity, that that was a concern of yours and, and it, your questions weren't answered, right? Well, at the time of the scene there, you said, you know, you noticed lapidity in the body, that, the, that Tammy Daybell apparently had died on her back, right? Right. Okay. Yes. Was that of a concern of yours at the time that would cause you to say, maybe I ought to take a step back before I sign this death certificate? At that time, no. Okay, but you were fully aware of the lapidity that you're claiming had occurred at that point. Is that right? Yes. Okay. There were no fresh bruises on Tammy Daybell's body anywhere, were there? On her arm, yes. Those were fresh bruises? I don't know. I'm not qualified to. Well, you did take a that. you did a report in that regard, did you not? I did, and it looked like an old bruise to me. And with that's, uh, we'll get to that. Okay. So when you filled out your medical report, you specifically not only identified that she had bruises on her arm, you actually used the word old bruises. Do you remember that? Yes, I did. Okay. And these were not fresh or uh, red or irritated or anything like that, correct? Objection, Your Honor. The witness has already indicated she's not qualified to determine that. Well, based on our observations all over. These weren't fresh bruises, were they, on her arms? These were old bruises, just like what your report says, correct? I can't answer that. Okay. But you, you will answer that on your report, when you decided to fill out a report relating to this case, that report said old bruises. When the, when the picture of the body, you wrote on the arms, old bruises on the arms, right? Yes. No other bruises on her body anywhere else, right? No. Nothing else that would, would, would deem to be suspicious on her body, correct? No. And in fact, there was no indication of any trauma to the neck that you could observe, right? No. There were no scratch marks on her hands that would indicate any kind of a struggle, correct? There was no irritation on her ears or her face or her head that would give you any indication that there was any kind of a struggle. Is that right? Yes. Okay. 
when you arrived, Chad Daybell was distraught, wasn't he? Yes. Sobbing. Yes. And you noted that it was that it was his son that was not upset. His son was was, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would you say his son was reserved? Yes. Quiet. Yes. And in the FBI report, you mentioned that you think that maybe his son was in shock. Remember that? Yes. Okay. And it's still your assessment at this point that at the time you felt that his son Garth was in shock. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You went over to the nightstand and on Tammy's side of the bed, you found the essential oils, right? The book. The what? The book. The book. Of essential oils of natural. Did you see any, did you, I would represent you that Officer Greenall testified that she found a number of items in the bedroom. And you also saw cough medicine on Tammy's side. Is that right? I don't recall the cough medicine being in the bedroom. Okay. What about the, what about the, uh, the, the medication for old, excuse me, strike. What about the medication for bruises that she had, that was in the bedroom as well? Do you recall that? No. Okay. But if Officer Greenall, and Officer Greenall was there, right? Yes. She and was. detailed that in her report, correct? Correct? I don't recall. Okay. Would it help you to review Officer Greenall's report? Yes. Judge, if I could just have a moment. You may. And Judge, I think while I'm waiting for this to load, I'll continue with some questions so we don't waste any time if it loads. So back to, we, I think where we left off is that Garth was, uh, in your opinion, was in shock at the death of his mother, correct? Correct. <laughs> and Chad Daybell throughout this episode of, of being there with with Tammy for the most part was sobbing and was highly emotional almost the entire time. Is that fair? Yes. There was no instance where you saw that he was faking it or trying to pretend to be uh, uh, upset. This was a genuine uh, situation where you truly believed he was upset about the death of his wife. Is that right? Objection. Speculation, Your Honor. Overruled. You can answer. Yes. Now, I appreciate you talking about it, and you mentioned it in the report, that at no time did the family ever try to prevent you from doing an autopsy in this case. Is that right? Emma stated she didn't want one done, but okay. it's my choice, ultimately my choice, right. yes. Emma didn't want one done because she didn't want her mother cut up, right? Correct, yes. She didn't want her mother subjected to uh, being... She didn't want her mother treated that way as part of the examination. Is that what her primary and only concern was? Yes. Okay. And yet Chad was indifferent one way or the other. He didn't tell you one way or the other whether he wanted one or didn't want one. Isn't that true? Yes. Um, and ultimately, it's not the family's decision whether this occurs. It's it's your decision whether this occurs. Is that right? Yes. And based on the facts as you saw them, you saw some old bruises that you identified in your report, right? Correct? Bruises. There were no other indications of a struggle or a fight as it related to Tammy Daybell's body. Is that right? No, not that I noticed, no. Okay. No other indication right up to the time you dropped her off at the morgue that there was any problem with Tammy's body in any way, correct? explain problem well you didn't see anything as part of the the when you arrived the time that you loaded her up and took her off to the morgue there was never anything during that process that would indicate there was anything wrong with tammy daybell's body right 
I don't know what you're asking me. Okay. I can't answer that question. Okay, how about this? There's nothing suspicious that you noted other than the lapidity uh, and the old bruises that you put in your medical report, correct? Correct. Judge, um, at this point, I've got the report of his officer agree now. With the court's permission, I could give it to the bailiff. He could take it to her and she could scroll through. I think that would protect um, in terms of being able to refresh your recollection about the report, if, if that's acceptable to the court. All right, I'll let the prosecutor take a look at that first before it goes to the witness to make sure it's appropriately identified. Oh, it's okay. Let's see? That has and I could have printed it off. Mr. Pryor, we've got that report also admitted as an exhibit. If that's that was also maybe I missed it, but I, I didn't have that marked down. And if the court wants to, uh, um, I don't either way, judge, either we can. I'd prefer the exhibit to your computer. All right. States exhibit 418. It doesn't work that way. I, I'm, I'm an idiot when it comes to electronics. Oh, thank you. And ma'am, after you've had a chance to review that, would you uh, look up and then just hand that back to the bailiff? Your Honor, while the witness is reviewing, may we have a quick sidebar? Well, let's have the witness finish the review and then we'll have a quick sidebar. Got it under. Um, I have it under. I think nineteen or one of these. I have it under, and I can. I'm going to move to admit the entire explanation. Yeah, I think the whole thing. I think the whole thing is. No, there's like four pages there, and the whole thing. So. Yeah, there's oh no that's okay we can just correct that. i don't have a problem with that and if you my stipulation do you want to read over this so you know what's in the whole thing well no just use the up and down thing and you can start and Okay, in her get it back to the bailiff and judge for uh, counsel. May I have, to have a look at that, uh, Mr. Bailiff, please? Yeah, and that's exhibit 418 that counsel's reviewing. You're right. It's only two. Judge, we may have to have a sidebar just very briefly. Would that be possible? Yes, that's fine. Want to look at the rest of it or? All right, so after a sidebar, we've determined we do need to take some uh, 
a little bit of time to get an exhibit prepared, which we're working on at this time. And we will take the mid morning recess to allow that uh, to occur while we're on break. So we'll take our break here, uh, plan on a 30 minute break to come back on at 10 15. All right, please. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, we can have the drop back, please. Hmm. All right, please. All rise. Please offer the for you. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> All right, we're back on the record. CR 22211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. Mm -hmm. Completed our morning break, um, maybe to help move things forward here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pryor, I'll note that we have now defendants exhibit 19, which is the entire report of officer Greenhalch, including uh, attached photographs. And I believe that's been offered and will be admitted by stipulation. Is that your understanding? It is judge and that's 19. Is that right judge? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wixom from the state does the state stipulate to the admission of exhibit 19, which is the entire report, including statements and photographs. We do your honor. Okay. That'll be admitted then as a single exhibit and you can proceed with your continuing cross Mr. Pryor. Now, Ms. Dye, as part of, um, um, your, uh, you know, activities on the scene at Ms. Uh, Daybell's death, you eventually went back and did a chart or a report as it related to this case. Do you recall that? And part of that is to do a body chart and identify things of significance on that body chart. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you, in fact, did that. Did you recall that? Yes. If I were to provide you with a copy of the chart, would you recognize that chart? If I could have the bailiff approach the witness. 
Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I showed it to you already. And do you recognize those documents? Mm -hmm. Are those the documents that you prepared uh, after uh, your examination of Tammy Daybell? Yes. And the date of those are 10, 20 of 14, is that right? <laughs> yes, that's the date the report was okay. completed. And those are true and accurate copies of what you prepared as a result of your examination of Tammy Daybell on the date of her death, is that correct? Yes. Okay, Judge, I'm going to move for admission of defendant's exhibit, and I would like it to be marked E and F, Judge. I think it's consistent with A, B, and C. E and F. E and F, 89 E and F. 89 E and F? Yes, Judge, and I think that was how it was uh, previously disclosed to the state on my exhibits. Uh, any objection to exhibits 89 E and F? No, Your Honor. All right. Defense exhibits 89E and 89F are admitted. And again, two separate exhibits there, Mr. Pryor. It's a body chart and then oh, two body charts, Judge. Two body charts. Thank you. You want to have that marked now, Judge, or how do you want to handle that? I'll grab, I'll grab it. I'll have the clerk mark that actually so we keep it straight. You're getting your mileage in tonight. Sorry. Yeah. So to be clear then, Mr. Pryor, the top, there's there's two pages here. The top page you gave me will be E and the bottom page will be F. Yes, Judge. Okay. No, ma'am, you've had a may I proceed, Judge? You may. You've had a chance to look at what's been marked Exhibit 89E and 89F. Is that correct? Yes. And based on the time that you spent at Mr. Daybell's residence observing Tammy, this is a true and accurate reflection of what you observed on that day, correct? Correct. And there at this point, there's no changes that you would make or any anything that you would modify in regards to this, correct? Correct. Okay. Judge, could I publish this? Yes. There's a light on that device, Mr. Pryor, that'll help with the shadow. Thank you. Okay. So on your and let me know when you're ready, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. On your left, when you're looking at the screen uh, and it's the uh, the face down figure, up on the arm we have a term. What is that term? Lividity. And blood had gathered there, is that right? That's what that means? Yes. Okay, and then a little further to the right on the same figure, there's another word that, what is that word? Lividity. And then to the left again on the same figure down near the, the, the lower part of the, the back, there's another word. Lividity. And then down on the legs, there's another term. What's that term? Lividity. So from what I gather from this, there was lividity in, on her entire body. Would that be fair? Yes. Okay. So we, we weren't able with lividity, you aren't able to really make a determination other than the fact that she was laying flat at some point, right? Yes or she was laying on her front one way or the other, right? Uh, on her back. Okay. So in your report, when you discussed this with the FBI, you had, based on all of your experience, you had said that the body had been dead for about five to six hours. Do you recall telling the FBI that? Approximately, yes. Okay, well, you said five to six hours. So are you 
that's what you testified to the FBI. Is that incorrect? No. Okay. So I guess the question is, is that Mr. Daybell mentioned that Tammy, he was awoken by the fact that Tammy had slipped out of the bed when he pulled the covers. You recall that? Yes. And Tammy had fallen down and her head was on the floor and her leg was up on the bed. You recall that? That's what I was told, yes. Okay. So if Tammy had died in the bed and it passed away in the bed, this lividity would be consistent with her dying in bed on her back, right? Yes. And if she fell down, and that's what woke Mr. Daybell up, there wouldn't be lividity up in her head, would there? No. So when Mr. Daybell told you that he was awoken when he pulled the covers, rolled over, and Tammy slid off the bed, well, that's consistent with, with the lividity here. She was in bed. She died in bed. And when he pulled the cover, she slid off. So wouldn't his story be consistent with, Levi with the lividity, fi lividity findings that she actually was in bed for five or six hours? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, I want to go over to the other side. And... Um, the one that's facing. And on that particular one, it says something about tinged foam. Could you read that for me? Blood tinged foam. Okay. And that's, that's what you observed on her body was the, and we saw the pictures of the blood tinged foam in her mouth, correct? Yes. Okay. And then further down on, on what would be her right arm, you put a word, two words there. And what are those words? Old bruising. Old bruising. Okay, so old bruising. Now, you didn't put new bruising, did you? No. You didn't put any marks on anywhere else on her body, right? No. And as part of your investigation, you are to do, you by statute are required to do a thorough investigation of the body. Is that right? Yes. And you did that that day, didn't you? Yes. And what you came up with is that she had some foam in her mouth. And there were some old bruises on her right arm. That's what you came up with, right? Yes. And you came up with nothing else on her body that showed any indication of any other trauma, marks? No. We can take that one down. I'm done with that. And Judge, at this time, I'm going to want to publish um, um, defense like it's defense exhibit nine, nine, 19, I believe. All right. Give me a moment. 19 F judge. I'm sorry. And judge, this is the one where we counsel. Sorry. This is just insane. Mr. Bailiff would. All right, again, Mr. Pryor, the way we're admitting and have admitted Exhibit 19 is just a single exhibit. So you can reference photographs contained within 19. They're not going to be given separate designations. So 19 F is not going to be an exhibit. Um, so you'll have to refer to it by, I guess, page number um, because that's the way it came in as one document. We're not going to have the sub documents in 19. It's just one exhibit. And judge, unfortunately, there are not page numbers on these. Okay. Well, if um, you... I can identify it as. Um, you can describe it or count through the pages, but okay. uh, it's one single exhibit. And Judge, uh, this page number is a is a, uh, a photo of Tammy Daybell's right arm, showing um, some di uh, some discoloration. 
Okay, and we've got the original exhibit here that's getting processed. We'll get that over to you here shortly, and you can publish off that courts. Judge, I've also got it on my screen. Could we do that by HDMI? You could do that as well if that's a accurate. So would you approach and look at this to see that it's a true and accurate? Uh, same one, right? And Judge Council has acknowledged it's the same picture. Okay, as long as it corresponds with the actual exhibit, exhibit 19 is admitted. It's the paper document of the entire report with the pictures. If you want to select one of the pictures to publish, we'll do that. Uh, I understand this is also a photograph, death scene photograph. The court's not going to publish to the public. It's going to be published to the jurors and the parties only based on a graphic content. Your Honor, may I have permission to stand here during this part of the cross-examination so I can have a vantage point for the screen? You may. Oh, it's up there, the magic. <clears throat> so ma'am, you're looking at what's a part of 19, exhibit 19, do you recognize that? Yes. And the old bruises that you were talking about, are those reflected on the two, what look to be discolored marks on Tammy Daybell's arm? Yes. And that's what you saw on that day, correct? Yes. And those are the old bruises that you talked about that you identified on her, her body on that day, correct? Yes. Okay, Judge, that's all I have at this point with this. I'll... All right. So, you testified earlier and you used the words, if I don't deem it necessary, if I don't deem it necessary that an autopsy is done, it's my decision alone to decide whether an autopsy is done, correct? Um, Your decision alone to decide whether an autopsy is done, correct? It's ultimately my decision. Right. Yes. And you looked at these old bruises that you identified, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct? Yes. And you looked at the foam coming from the mouth, right? Yes. Okay. And I didn't see any other marks or any other indication of anything other than the lividity that you talked about, correct? Correct. And based on that, you then issued a death certificate, right? Yes. Now, before you issue a death certificate, you have an obligation, do you not? Before you issue and sign that death certificate? Are you aware of your obligation? Yes. Okay, and that obligation is that you want to attest, but when you put your signature down on that death certificate, you want to be sure that what you're signing is true and accurate to the best of your ability based on the information you have at the time of the death. Is that fair? Yes. Okay, and at that point, the death certificate, and Judge, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to publish Exhibit 20, but ex Exhibit 20 reflects that death certificate. You you talked about pulmonary edema, edema, and then there was another cause for this, right? Another one, another reason why you uh, cited her, two things that you cited as part of what you felt was her death, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you did talk to Chad, and he talked to you about the fact that um, Tammy vomited the night before, correct? Yes. And you had mentioned about the stomach. Was that stomach completely full? No, not completely. Right. And were you aware, did, when you were there, did you talk to Garth about the fact that he uh, bought Tammy a, a quarter pounder and some French fries that night? Did you discuss that with Garth? No. 
Okay. But when you went through the autopsy, you found French, you found potatoes in her stomach, right? I didn't identify it. Okay. I just saw, I just saw the stomach contents. Okay. But you weren't able to identify that there were potatoes in her, her stomach. And you didn't identify the fact that there was any sight of a quarter pounder or anything like that, correct? No. Okay. So when you said that it, you found it unusual that her stomach was full, it wasn't really full. It just had contents in it. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So we really don't know whether Tammy Daybell threw up that night other than the fact that Chad said she did, right? Right. And when you showed up, Chad Daybell is sobbing, he's crying, and he's telling you how his, his, his wife threw up the night before, correct? Yes. Went to sleep, and she fell off the bed. And based on the lividity, his story is consistent with what the lividity findings you had, right? Yes. Okay. Now, you also um, had an opportunity to look at um, Officer Greenall's report, correct? Yes. And you saw that um, uh, the number of medications that Tammy Daybell was taking, correct? Uh, Do I need to refresh yeah. your recollection with it again? Do you need to no, see it I again? Saw, I saw it. You saw it? You sure? Yes. So on page one of Officer Greenall's report, um, and these are, and the comment was that they're on the table every morning and she takes them to help her. You recall seeing that in Officer Greenall's report? Yes. And you discussed that with Officer Greenall, right? You discussed what Tammy Daybell was taking as part of your investigation, didn't you? Yes. Okay, so you're aware that she was taking fluex mm, fluexetine, thank you, fluexetine, yes. which is Prozac. Yes. Uh, she was taking acetaminophen. She was taking ibuprofen, right? Vitality extracts, immunity, energy, grapefruit, peppermint. I'm sorry. And I, oh, I apologize. Vitality, vitality extracts for immunity, energy, grapefruit, and peppermint. You saw that as well, right? On the table, right? I recall it was in the cupboard. Right. You recall that was in the cupboard? The that wasn't kitchen, on the table? Not the bedside table, the kitchen cupboard. Well, when... When Officer Greenow says, Chad showed me all of the over-counter medicines she takes, she said she has approximately 10 bottles on the table every morning. So would you be mistaken, possibly, that Officer Greenow must have made a mistake in a report, or do you possibly, you just don't recall correctly? Doesn't it say in her report, the cupboard? Oh, it talks, uh, it talks about what was in the cupboard. And that there were other things in the cupboard in addition to these things. But Officer Greenow talks about this being on the table. You don't remember that? There's a picture of those medications in the cupboard in the kitchen. Okay. Okay. And then equate cough medicine, right? Yes. Essential oil respiratory blend, right? Yes. And then lastly, supplement for bruising and sore muscles. Remember that as well? Yes. And then there is a reference that most of what was in the cupboard were essential oils, natural remedies, and some pen pain medication. Okay? Yes. So this cupboard was full of a number of essential oils, right? Yes. This cupboard was a, a full of uh, natural remedies, correct? Yes. And this cupboard was included in, in all of these things as well. Um, a lot of medicine that she was taking, right? Natural, yes. Yeah. And there's no doubt in your mind that Tammy Daybell was the one taking all of these medications, right? That's what we were told, yes. Okay. And Chad talked to you about Tammy having minor fits and shaking consistent with fatigue, right? Consistent with syncopal. Minor fits. Syncopal episodes. She had. Yeah, Mr. Pryor, please let her finish her answer before you get another question going. You want me to restate? Yes, please. You were told that Tamara 
would have minor fits of shaking, which were consistent with seizures, correct? Yes. Now, when you have a seizure, you're aware that you don't need to have a heart condition or a, a problem with your organs in order to have a seizure, right? It's it's in the brain. Okay. But what in the brain is the seizure? It doesn't necessarily mean you have a sign of it in your brain, do you? I'm not a doctor. So I okay. But you made an assessment here based on what you said, and you signed a death certificate saying that this was something other than homicide or murder, didn't you? Initially, yes. Okay. And then you, her daughter, Emma, talked about um, her mother was trying to take clogging classes, but then in the last month or so was just wasn't able to keep up and was having some difficulty as well, correct? Yes. Okay. And there was some discussion that Chad was in the the temple and that I, that's part of his faith, I guess. There's a, we previously talked about a temple and that's somewhere, I guess, where you practice your religious faith. Yes. And during that time while in the temple, she fainted while she was kneeling down, right? Yes, when she went to stand up, yes. Right. <clears throat> and there were other instances where she was having health issues and balance problems as well that were vaguely referenced in the report, right? Yes. Okay. So based on the fact that she had seizures, based on the fact that those bruises were nothing new or recent, there was nothing on her neck or face that indicated that she was smothered, choked, or anything like that you made the determination that there was a medical reason for why she passed away, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, that all changed though, right? Yes. And then at some point, um, you received a call from some police officers in Arizona, right? Yes. And they said, hey, we got this situation with Lori Vallow, right? Yes. And we got another situation with Lori Vallow and Alex Cox related to the name Brandon Boudreaux, right? Yes. And the first situation was with Charles Vallow, right? Yes. Did that officer happen to tell you at that time that Chad Daybell isn't implicated or involved in any criminal proceeding against, uh, um, against either of those folks? Was that told to you at that time? That... Yes, Chad Daybell's name was mentioned with Lori Vallow. Yeah, but did would they happen to tell you that they're not pursuing any charges against Mr. Daybell at that point? No. Okay, so that was left out when they talked to you about looking into this thing, right? Yes. And then at that point, based on your previous observation of foam in the mouth, right? Yes. And the lividity, right? Yes. And what those police officers told you when you had your discussion with them, right? Yes. At that point, you decided, maybe I need to look into this thing a little more, right? Yes. And at that point, you helped with the officers getting an order to exhume Tammy Daybell's body. Yes. Did you start an inquest or statute into this matter? I... I can't answer that. Well, you can, because did you start an inquest? You read the statute. If there's an allegation someone has been murdered, homicide, suicide, you have the option to start a public inquest. Hold on before you answer. Grounds. Council should not be uh, interpreting the law at this point. And I don't know if she's able to draw the legal conclusion. Uh, it's a... Yes or no question, but to the extent it's calling for any legal conclusion, it's sustained. Okay. Well, yes or no. Did you start an inquest? No. No. Instead, what you did is you started working with the uh, police officers and the prosecuting attorney. On Objection, it. argumentative. Sustained. At this point, you then notified the police that uh, you wanted her body dug up, right? At that point, we were working with the FBI and okay. police from different locations. Yes. Oh, so the FBI was involved as well, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. I believe so. And at that point, um, there was an order to have Tammy's body removed from the ground, right? Yes. Now, as part of your notification, your duties as a coroner, 
Isn't it true that you're also supposed to notify families in regards to any death or suspicious death and let them know what's proceeding in these matters? I believe that was done. It was done? I believe it was. Do you know what family members they happened to mention that to, that they were digging their mother out of the ground? I don't recall which ones. No. Okay. And it was your duty to do that. So you don't recall your duty of having to notify them that they're digging their mother out of the ground. <laughs> right? I work closely with the investigators okay. through the sheriff's office, our detectives. Yeah. And and I didn't ask you about what you did with the investigators, ma'am. I asked you whether you told the family you were digging their mother out of the ground. No. Was there any other reason you were looking for, for what a reason for why Tammy Daybell could have died other than what you said about the lividity or anything else? Was there any other thing, other suspicious circumstances you were looking for? At the time of her death, no. And at the time of digging her up, were you looking for something else? Yes. What were you looking for? Suspicious activity, um, anything that would... <clears throat> result in homicide. Okay. And that was after talking to the police, you were looking for information that would help maybe uh, convince you to change your report to something other than natural causes. Is that right? After, after several things happened. Yes. Well, I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Brandon Boudreaux or Charles Vallow. We've already established what, what that's all about. I'm talking about the, the facts you had when Tammy Daybell was put in the ground. It was lividity, and that really was it, wasn't it? No. I was told about her past health history. Okay. And that played into her cause of death, yes. Did you happen to look at Teton Medical Report and see what her past medical history was? I did review it. Okay. Yes. So then you're real well aware that Tammy Daybell had a history of anemia, right? Past history, not current. Right. Well, she wasn't treated. She wasn't being treated because she wouldn't go to the doctor for anemia. You didn't see any indication that she had been cured of anemia, right? It, it just stated her past medical right. history. And based on your information, there's no indication in any single medical report that you know, amazingly, Tammy Daybell has been has been cured of her anemia, right? No. Okay. You also saw that she had a family history of heart disease and heart problems as well, right? Family history, yes. Yeah, family history, right? Yes. And you're also aware that Tammy Daybell had a, a, a difficulty with going and seeing doctors, correct? She didn't like to see doctors, did she? Correct. In fact, she relied on homeopathic essential oils and minerals to, to, to solve her medical maladies, right? That's what I was told, yes. Right. Okay. So based on the other information that you had about Tammy's history, you, 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 you decided that even though there's anemia and there's a past history of, of heart disease and heart issues in the family, we were still going to dig her up, right? Yes. And, and yes. would you agree with me, ma'am? You were you were basically going on a fishing expedition looking for a reason to Objection. Take. Argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. You were basically looking for some reason to dig Tammy up and try to come up with another cause of death, right? Objection again. Argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. Ask a question, please, Mr. Pryor. After she was dug up and you went into the, uh, um, and had the autopsy done, right? By the way, what, where was that autopsy done? In Utah. Where in Utah? I don't recall exactly okay. where we were. But you were in Utah somewhere, right? Yes. And Judge, if I could just have a minute. You may. That's all I have. 
All right, Mr. Wixom, redirect. If I may, Honor. Mr. Bailiff. Ma'am, do you recall being asked several questions about what your legal responsibilities are as a coroner on, by the defense counsel? Yes. Okay. With respect to your duty to perform an investigation, will you please recount what uh, steps you took in your investigation originally at, at the time of death? I am. <clears throat> um, Asked for medical history um, for Tammy, uh, looked for medications. We also looked uh, in the bedroom, in the nightstand drawers um, for anything that would be suspicious. And then I, um, Officer Greenhalch and myself and Deputy Wilmore also spoke with two of with one of two of our detectives um, and officer Greenhalch was told just to take uh, take some good pictures and document well and in fact uh, pictures were taken is that correct yes were you present when those pictures were taken yes did you provide any instruction as a coroner as to what pictures to take or how to take them yes do you recall anything else you did as part of your investigation? Let me ask this. Did you attempt to talk to Garth about the circumstances of his mother's death? I, I mostly just talked to Chad and Emma. At the time, Garth was just very quiet and just would nod when we would ask him questions or when Chad would respond. He was just really quiet. And with respect to a number of the questions, you mm -hmm. you continued to tell the jury, that's what I was told. Do you remember responding in that manner? Yes. Yeah. Who was the person on scene that was primarily providing you with all the information that you were relying upon? Chad Daybell. And at the time, did Chad bring up any issues about his connection to Lori Vallow? No. Did he bring up Alex Cox's name? No. Did he bring up the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreaux? No. Defense counsel made clear that you had estimated an approximate time of death, roughly five to six hours before you arrived on scene. Is that is that fair? Yes. Likewise, you were asked questions about finding a number of supplements and other over-the-counter prescriptions on scene. Yes. Was it even possible for you to ascertain how long those items had been on scene before you got there? No. <clears throat> Were you, did you get any other information from Chad to verify that in fact she was taking those supplements and they had been on scene prior to her passing? I did not. <clears throat> Do you think it's possible that someone else could have put those supplements on scene before you arrived? They could have, yes. You were asked about your duties to provide an accurate death certificate. Yes. And in fact, you did file uh, an original death certificate and then a second amended certificate. Yes, correct. Why did you file the second amended certificate? 
the results of the autopsy. Um, and two other dead children at the same residence. What other dead children are you referring to? JJ and Tylee. Did Chad volunteer any information about those two no. at the time? No. When you filed the amended certificate, were you, were you doing that as part of your duty as a coroner? Yes, I was. And, and explain that, why? How, how is that a fulfillment of your duty? That was the conclusion of the investigation. Um, you were asked several questions about the bruising that was observed on Tammy's arm. Yes. Do you have any qualification as you sit there today to determine the age of bruising? It looked old to me, but I don't have the expertise. And in fact, during the autopsy that you observed, did the ME provide any information about that? Judge, I'm calling calls for uh, medical conclusion, calls for hearsay, and there's a lack of foundation. Sustained. But as you sit there, do you uh, do you have any reason to? Think you have the ability to say whether they were old bruises or fresh bruises, you personally? Me personally? Yeah. You were asked some questions about your duty to inform family if you feel like there might need to be further investigation and exhumation. Do you remember that question? Yes. And, why didn't you do that? Um, I don't recall. I don't. Do you remember what you told the defense attorney a few moments ago? Um, our detectives uh, and officers, I believe they informed the family. So that was your understanding at the time? That was my understanding, yes. Were you ever given any information from law enforcement about how cooperative the family was uh, during the course of the investigation? Judge, objection. I just asked this for me. They're basing the response on hearsay. And the only way they get that is through hearsay, Judge. Yeah, the question was, was she given information? Um, it is, it's eliciting hearsay, Mr. Wixon, it's sustained. May I argue on that, Judge? No, I made the ruling, so ask okay. another question. You indicated that while you were on scene, I, th I think your words were that Chad was sobbing and crying. Yes. And is it fair to say that different people have different emotions yes. when there is a grief situation? Were you able to observe or get any information about whether or not a few weeks later when Chad was marrying Lori Vallow, if he was crying or sobbing? relevance. Sustained. Is it fair to say that when you were asking these questions on scene about Tammy's health, that Garth didn't give you any information about her health? No, he didn't. <clears throat> Only that he was sharing her um, fluoxetine prescription with his mom. And again, you've already testified about the reasons for your change in the amended certificate. Yes. And that was based upon you being at the autopsy. Judge asked and answered. I, I'm just overruled. Go ahead. You already explained you attended the autopsy. Yes, I did. Is there anything else as you sit there today that you can explain to the jury that you learned from that autopsy experience that helped support your decision to change the death certificate? Mm 
the expertise of the medical examiner. Um, and the investigation that was going on. Um, into other deaths and Anything further? Anything else? Your Honor, I don't have any further questions. Judge, there were some new subjects brought up about Alex Cox, Lori Vallow, as well as supplements on the scene and the windows arrived. I think I ought to be allowed to at least inquire on those two subjects. On the supplements on the scene, I'll allow that. On the other topics, I think that was within the scope okay. of the cross. So just on that limited point made by redirect on the supplements, you can recross. Ma'am, do you recall about what time the call was made, the 911 call was made? I don't recall the exact time it was made, no. But you did say that you uh, dispatched your deputy coroner Tammy Wilmore to be there because she could have gotten there within 10 minutes, right? Correct, yes. And the purpose for that is that she lives, we're not going to say the town, but she lives close by this residence. Yes. And she could get there relatively quickly, correct? Quicker than me, yes. So when the uh, dispatch 911 call was made, Miss Wilmore was Miss Wilmore was there within 10 minutes, right? She was in bed when it happened, so probably not 10 minutes. She had to get dressed and gather her stuff and respond to the scene, yes. But you were there within 20 minutes, and she arrived I, before you got there. I said approximately. Yeah. So uh, prosecuting attorney suggesting that someone ran out and bought a bunch of supplements, staged this thing, and within 10 minutes of... Miss Wilmore arriving planted all of this evidence. That isn't very realistic, is it? Could have happened before. Okay. All right. Fair yes, enough. Before. Fair enough. Thank you, Judge. Nothing else. All right. That concludes the testimony then of Coroner Die. Uh, is the state seeking to recall the witness in the future? From the defense. And Judge, Miss Dye is under subpoena from my office, but I'm releasing her from that subpoena today. Okay. So that does conclude your testimony for the trial. You can be excused. Thank you for appearing. You can go ahead and step down from the witness box and we'll gather anything that was there in the way of exhibits.